Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another edition of Badger Blitz TV, your rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics uh, from the recruiting trail inside Camp Randall Stadium and on the quarter of the Cole Center. I'm Jay Kokorowski, senior writer and, uh, of course, of BadgerBlitz.com. And joining us, it's our weekly recruiting Q&A part two this week. Once again, Clint Cosgrove, our recruiting analyst, the master of Midwest recruiting uh, for rivals.com. Uh, good friend. You're still Recovering from Indianapolis after a vis- busy but successful camp, uh, and my friend, it's good seeing you again. Always a pleasure, man. Always, always good talking ball with you. And this is part two of our recruiting chat, and just let people know, if you're a BadgerBlitz.com subscriber, please do. We'd love to earn your business further. Every week or two, I send out a thread on our Badger's Den forum, which is exclusively for subscribers, saying, hey, Clinton, and I are doing a Q&A this week. Hit us up with questions that you have on the recruiting side, and y'all delivered. So this is part two of our discussion once again, since you all have many questions after spring football. Of course, camp season is upon us, and uh, obviously leading into official visit season in June. So let's get to it right away. Let's start off, though, not talking about 2023. Let's go talk in 2024, okay? Intriguing in-state talents in the 2024 class. You and I were talking about it before we started recruiting. There's some talent here in the class coming up. I know two of them we've talked extensively about with Corey Smith and Donovan Harbor. Yeah, uh, obviously the offer kids and, and, and Corey Smith, Donovan Harbor, uh, teammates, uh, Wisconsin kids. Uh, like I said, Corey did a good job at the Rivals Indianapolis camp. Donovan showed some upside. Uh, you know, both would be big gets. Uh, both are going to be pretty highly rated kids, especially if Corey retains his rating or moves up and especially if donovan moves up which i could see happening uh with some further development because he's got a chance to be very good uh, but we've talked about those guys a lot and i'm sure the wisconsin fans know all about them and i uh, watched the film and all that uh so i'm gonna move on to uh some some other guys that uh maybe aren't as well known and i really didn't know much about them until i recently did a little digging and um uh, you know, uh, there's three kids and they all happen to be offensive and defensive linemen. Uh, um, imagine surprise, that. Uh, surprise, surprise, yeah, surprise. I know. Well, we do one thing really good in Wisconsin and that's put out linemen. So, uh, but, uh, uh, we've got Jace Gilbert at Heartland Arrowhead. He's a defensive end. He does have an offer, uh, a division one offer from central Michigan. Um, you know, he's intriguing. I have not seen him in person. Uh, but he does make some plays. Uh, he's, you know, he's in that six four range, I believe. Uh, you know, explosive off the ball, has a good motor. Uh, looks like a tough kid. You know, you can't judge toughness really until you learn more about him. But just the way he plays the game, he's like a bull in a china shop. So I like what I see out of him. You know, he's a kid that I'm sure will get a close close look from Wisconsin. Then there's a kid named Stephen Scott the third, and uh, this kid's huge. He is. Uh, <laughs> He's listed at 6'7", 270 on our site. Um, probably ends up on the offensive line, but he plays a lot of D-line on his film as well. Uh, really intriguing kid. Uh, he's got good size. And, you know, he does have the athleticism where he probably could play on the defensive line, um, which is impressive at 270 pounds and being a 2024, that only being sophomore film. Um, but, you know, he, he looks like he's your prototypical offensive lineman. Uh, He flashes on film. I'm going to need to do a little deeper dive before I'd say, you know, he's necessarily an offer kid or something. But uh, you do like the size. You do like that he's an in-state kid um, and and the success, you know, that in-state linemen that Wisconsin has taken, the success that they have had. Now, the kid that is really intriguing to me is a kid named Robert Booker out of Wanakee. And uh, he's listed at 6'7", 210. Uh, on on rivals and uh, he definitely looks six seven. Um, he looks a little bigger than two ten. I haven't seen him yet. I usually do make it to Wanaki, um just because they always either beat us or knock us out of the playoffs in high school. And it was the only <laughs> team that I only team that I never beat. Uh, I think so. Oh. Um, yeah. So I have to make sure that uh, that they always have good talent, and that's why we uh, we were never able to overcome that. But uh off my tangent robert booker uh uh long 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 kid extremely raw but uh you know he's got this long stride and covers so much ground and you see him chase the quarterback his film's limited 
Um, but he's a heck of a basketball player too. And so uh, I personally, uh, it's, it's a bias. I love basketball players that play football. I do. Um, you know, six, seven, you're getting in that range where that's it good enough to if you can play especially you know small forward or guard at that height but six seven is normal in basketball and it is special in football and when you see um i know i had you watch a couple uh, of his clips and um you know I, I see some upside there so i'll be interested to do a little more digging on him uh but i'd be shocked if he's not a kid unless he ends up or is a big time basketball recruit um that uh you know wisconsin will, will should definitely be at least poking around at. So uh, those are, you know, it's nice to talk about a, a few new kids. I love Corey, love Donovan, love you guys if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> but we've uh, we've talked about you guys a lot. We know how good you are, um, and we know Wisconsin would be fired up to have you. Uh, so it was fun to, you know, do a little research and, and find a couple other guys that, uh, two of which do not have offers, at least in football. I wouldn't be surprised if Booker does in basketball. Um, and then Stephen Scott and then Jace Gilbert, who has a Central Michigan offer, um, anytime you're a 2024 and you get a FBS level offer, uh, you usually, unless you don't develop at all uh, or have some other issues, you usually end up blowing up a little more. So uh, those are some intriguing kids, and I'm sure more will pop up as I do a deeper dive. And we got about maybe 90 more seconds here real quick, Clint. I know we have one more question. We'll answer this quick because I think it's a little bit still too early for this question, but long Long, you know, talking too much here, but when it comes to just the new staff, right, and people have been asked about this uh, in terms of uh, have the new coaches or new to the position in terms of coaches brought any philosophical differences in the guys they're recruiting or body types or skill sets. Uh, I still think it's still early on my end uh, from seeing it because, you know, you have Bob Bosa on the offensive line. I mean, he's been, done some interesting things. Joe Crocker out of Tennessee, a four-star kid, you know, who's slated to take an official you know, visit at some point. He hopes to uh, in the summer, you know, you're seeing some offers, you know, to other places, you know, um, you know, here and there, but I still think it's really early uh, and, and whatnot. Maybe the wide receiver room, we're starting to see, players like you know they're getting a little bit taller tommy mcintosh is coming in with the 2022 class uh you know six five ish kid and then you have you know even on the roster six two ish with Keontes lewis and marcus allen though again i still think they still have a good mix within that group that are shorter than that group but uh in your eyes anything that's standing out maybe to you uh regarding that i mean i would agree with you 100 percent. it's way too early uh you know you You've got one one spring ball under the belt. Uh, you've got guys that are just learning their personnel right now. So I think as the new coaches uh, get more familiar with the personnel they have and, uh, you know, see if that lines up with their philosophy or not, that's when we will see the, the changes maybe in the type of athlete you recruit. You talked about the big receivers. That's obvious. I think they've taken a more aggressive approach in recruiting. With the uh, new recruiting staff, they've offered multiple underclassmen in Illinois and Missouri, uh, which is something that stands out. But I think, like you said, it's it's too early to to really judge philosophical differences at this point. Excellent, man. Clint, man, I appreciate you, man. Once again, uh, appreciate you and all everything you've done with Rivals.com and, and this weekly Q&A chat with me, man. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I can't wait, man. It's been a lot of fun. Folks, that's Clint Cosgrove. We'll let you guys go. Y'all have a great rest of the week. This is Jay Kokorowski signing off for Badger Blitz TV and BadgerBlitz.com. Take care. Be well. Talk to you soon.